Let's go talk about some of the other nutrients. So we know things like 5-HTP or tryptophan is a precursor to serotonin and serotonin's, you know, obviously that neurotransmitter that helps with focus and feeling good. It's a very, you know, happy neurotransmitter. A lot of times dopamine can overlap because dopamine helps with focus. It's an I love you neurotransmitter. So a lot of times there can be an overlap in those symptoms. And a lot of times people that have low serotonin could have low dopamine as well. And also the enzyme that metabolizes serotonin that metabolizes 5-HTP and converts it downstream to serotonin is the aromatic decarboxylase enzyme. And that enzyme also metabolizes dopamine. So if you constantly take 5-HTP support chronically, you probably want to have a little bit of dopamine tyrosine support as well, because you can create some functional deficiencies long term. So just kind of keep that in mind. Like in my line, we have a product called Brain Replete that has a, a 10 to 1 balance of tyrosine to serotonin. And if you're taking a lot of serotonin, it's probably okay, especially if you're testing it on the organic acid. But just long term, you probably want to throw a little bit of dopamine, whether it's tyrosine in there to provide some building blocks, that's excellent out of the gates. And then there's a couple of really important um, methyl support that needs to be there. B6 and B12 are very, very important. B6 is incredibly necessary for the synthesis of neurotransmitters. We need B6 as an important cofactor and so is B12. And B12 is methylated B12, really important for the methylation of these neurotransmitters where we attach a carbon and three hydrogen um, to it. That's methylation. Very important. Also, vitamin C is very important because vitamin C tends to be burnt up and overly utilized when there's a lot of adrenal stress as well. We talked about 5-HTP. We talked about some potential tyrosine. And then it's also nice to throw in a little bit of an adaptogen because adaptogens help with the stress response. They help with perceived stress. Um, so even if you're stressed right now, just giving you some support on the adaptogenic herbal side will change your perception to it. And so things like rhodiola or ashwagandha or ginseng or eleuthero are amazing to help kind of, or even uh, maca, especially women do very well with maca, are very good for stress perception and stress modulation. Yeah, great, great calls. So just to back up what you said, there was a trial done uh, and we're, we're not fans of drugs. We prefer to try to come at it the natural functional way whenever possible. However, there was a study done that compared antidepressant use and just antidepressant by itself compared to antidepressant plus B12. And a hundred percent of the subjects that got the B12 and the antidepressant showed at least a 20% improvement with their symptoms compared to the antidepressant alone. So just to tell you one more time, antidepressant plus B12 20% improvement in the outcome as opposed to just the antidepressant by itself. And then also folate, same thing. There's a paper on folate and how that also boosts things up. And then I don't know if you've, you've played with this one much, but have you seen some of the scalidium extracts? You've got some of these saffron and scalidium blends like this. No. Zembrin. Yeah. So it, it's pretty cool. I'll put it in the chat for you so you can look at this tech sheet. You might have to log in, but I'm going to send it to you. Yeah, put, put those links to the studies and we'll put it in the description notes after the show so you guys can take a peek at it. Yeah, but so Justin, really, I just, I, I just put it for you in the chat if you want to see it. Like I said, you may have to log in to see this tech sheet, but this is a cool product and I've used it with some people that were previously on antidepressants and they got off of it and many of them reported they felt just as good. And so the scalidium plant is kind of an indigenous South African plant Indigenous people have used it, it says for uh, relaxation, stress reduction, calming thirst and hunger prior, prior to long hunting, hunting trips, which is pretty cool. Mm. And it acts like an SSRI. So the scalidium binds to the serotonin transporters, inhibiting the reuptake of serotonin from the synapse, resulting in increased serotonin concentration in the synaptic cleft. This is the same mechanism of prescription SSRIs. So this is a game changer potentially. And like I said, I've had clients that were previously on the pharmaceuticals and then they did this one and they like this one much, much better. That's good. Yeah, there's a lot of good options. It's nice to have some herbals, whether it's adapogens or the scalidium, whether it's the saffron. And I think in that, um, the important cofactors need to be there. B6, B12, you could yeah. maybe even throw in some full weight in there because full weight tends to interact. So I tend to have a, you know products that will have B6, will have the serotonin, have the dopamine support. And then we always, like I think you're in the same place, always having a really good multi there in the background just to make sure all those cofactors are there. And then of course, having a really good solid diet as a foundation, that kind of gives you that insurance policy that 
the building blocks are there, the cofactors are there, and then you can really hit things more therapeutically after. Yep, absolutely.